everything you need to know in less than 5 minutes. Samira has been nerfed extremely hard when you compare her current version with what she could do on her release date. However, she is still a perfectly fine champion today and has more tricks up her sleeve than most other AD carries. Her outplay potential is huge and her moveset is perfectly complemented by some of the strongest runes and items in the entire game. Your playstyle with Samira mainly revolves around your Q spell and your ultimate. Q should be maxed first for that reason, followed by your E for the higher attack speed steroid. W is your 1.1 wonder and you skill your ultimate whenever possible. Your ultimate can only be activated though when you have 6 stacks on your passive. Samira is one of those champions whose passive looks like an entire novel, but it is actually easier to understand than you might assume. You get rewarded with stacks of movement speed for alternating between your Q and your basic attacks, and for comboing your spells into each other. Oh, and don't forget that you can right-click enemies who are either stunned or airborne in order to dash towards them and attack instantly. This part of your passive means Samira synergizes best with knock-up supports such as Alistar, Nautilus or Blitzcrank, because knock-up durations are also extended by your attack, but any support with hard crowd control is strong with her. Avoid playing Samira with poke and enchanter champions like Yumi or Karma on the other hand, as this lack of synergy will make it that much harder for you to win lane. Your Q spell is really your bread and butter, as it is essentially a shorter ranged version of Ezreal's Mystic Shot, allowing you to be useful in fights without going all in right away. In melee range it deals bonus damage just like your auto attack, and its hitbox will cover a wide area in front of you which makes it very easy to land. Your wind wall is on your W. Not only is this a great tool for stacking your passive, but it also skews certain matchups heavily in your favor. Use it to block key projectiles with long cooldowns, like a Thresh Hook for example, or use it when you go all in during the lane phase to completely negate any damage the opposing AD carry can do. Your E only allows you to dash towards enemy units nowadays, so it is purely an engaged tool and no longer provides that much safety anymore. However, keep in mind that you can combo this dash with literally all of your other abilities, allowing for some really explosive engages when you see an opening for yourself. You can amplify your dash by pressing Q, and you can also cast E while your W or your ultimate is still active. Once you dash into a teamfight, you also want to be able to cast your ultimate immediately for massive AoE damage. This is easily doable if you engage with your W-E-Q combo, because W will provide two passive stacks by itself here, as it hits both before and after your E damage. As you can see, Samira rewards you for being in the middle of teamfights at the right moment, whereas other AD carries typically stay behind their frontline to attack from maximum distance. This means you will take a lot of damage, since every single enemy champion will start to focus you instantly when you get close. Samira's runes and item build are designed to allow you to survive this enemy counter attack long enough to kill them first. Hence you go for Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline and Coup de Grasse, with Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter secondary. Your shards are Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, Armor and pressing the Like button. AD carries typically pick Conqueror, if at all, for the stacking bonus attack damage, as they will rarely get to maximum stacks to unlock the healing. Samira on the other hand stacks this keystone extremely quickly with all her abilities, so it is quite common that you get Conqueror's bonus lifesteal for your ultimate. Presence of Mind allows you to keep spamming your spells over the course of an extended teamfight, so you will never run out of mana. This is especially important as your E cooldown is reset every time you get a takedown, so actually having enough mana to cast your E multiple times per fight is absolutely mandatory. Bloodline, Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter are crucial to Samira's game plan, because the more lifesteal you have, the more likely you are to drain tank the enemy's damage with your ultimate. The same idea can be found in your item build. Samira needs to rush Immortal Shieldbow for her first item because on top of giving you more lifesteal for drain tanking, Shieldbow's lifeline passive makes it almost impossible for the enemy to kill you with burst damage. And burst damage really is the biggest counter against Samira because if you die before you can deal much damage yourself, all your lifesteal is effectively useless. The rest of Samira's core build is purely focused on damage and crit while avoiding attack speed. Attack speed would only boost your auto attacks, while damage and crit also amplify your Q and your ultimate, complementing your spell-based playstyle. Yes, Samira's Q and ult do benefit from critical strike chance, which is the reason why you don't just go for lethality on her. With crit items you deal more damage at all stages of the game than with lethality, solely due to these spell interactions. Because Samira is primarily an AD caster, your boots, your E-steroid and your shield bow are definitely providing enough attack speed by themselves, allowing you to get Collector and Infinity Edge for maximum spell damage. The remaining item slots are of course situational and depend on your individual game state. Sometimes you need utility items, sometimes more defense, and most of the time simply more damage. Now if you found that video helpful, you can access an entire playlist of educational content like this by clicking the link on your screen right there.